guys, welcome back. Let's play Chrono Cross. Last time we confronted the Sage of Marbule and got his assistance in getting into the Dead Sea. Then we took on the Grand Slam, wasted our way through that, and then recruited both Janice and Snap. However, we never got around to getting over to Nikki's boat. And now that we have spoken with Nikki and he has asked us for us to go talk to, talk to him, we can now get on here without the cats and we can move over and talk to him at any time. Now, technically, this scene here is the start of a side quest. It's probably it's one of the top two most important side quests in the entire game. Uh, it's also one of my two favorites in the entire game. There's just... Okay, that's the wrong room. But, um, yeah, there's lots and lots of... Si well, not lots, but there's a few side quests in this game. But there's only, like, three that are really, really important to do. Everything else can, for the most part, be skipped. But these three are important. This is one of the three that are basically required. Not only for your ability to compete in battle, but also for the story content that they provide. And I think there's a relatively short window of doing this. I can't remember for sure, but basically we're already on the boat, so I would highly recommend that you do this now. Like to sing a song to save an island. He doesn't think. He is out of his mind, of course. He's a, he's a rock star. According to Irene's, the island of Marbule is infested with monsters. We kind of saw that for ourselves. Now, I'm not 100% sure if you have to have spoken with Irene's in, in uh, Marbule first, but I think that's part of this entire sequence. You speak with her there, you come aboard the Zeldas, and I don't know if you have to do any of the other cutscenes, but I've shown off how to do all of those other cutscenes. And the story content is really excellent for a lot of this. And it really fleshes out some characters that otherwise get very little uh, story development. So I think it's well worth your time to go do that. Only weakness is a demi-human song for the Sage notes. While we perform our gig near the island, these people will exterminate the monsters. Well... In order to continue with the side quest and do the part that we can, we of course need to agree. And she's going to get the Demi-Humans to play backup instruments. Ah, oh, okay. We've got to bring the ship over to Marvule. Our ship is chained to the Zeldas. Now, they haven't really explained it all that well, and I'm not entirely sure what they're going for here, but I get the picture that Nikki has signed some kind of deal with Fargo, and the ship can't leave. I'm not entirely sure why, and I don't know if they ever explain it, but that that's my kind of what I gather. Okay, so you do have a contract, but I, like, they don't think they explain it beyond that. Not gonna go with the ship alone. Wouldn't want to disappoint the fans aboard the Zelbus. Convince uh, that guy. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Okay. So Irene is gonna try and uh, motivate Fargo to uh, allow the ship to go over there. See how far we can take our ship. Let's get ready for rehearsal. He'll put on a good gig. I, I get the feeling that he's saying that as an old man would try and say, uh, like a, a word that only the kids would use. You know, if he heard it one time, it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and use this and not really understand its significance properly. That's just how it comes across for me with the uh, the quotations there. 
People are walking through Norris. You don't walk through Chuck Norris. Come on. Now, if you spoke with Irene's earlier in Marbule, this part uh, will uh, occur. Uh, you have to do that in order for this part of the cutscene to play out. And this part of the cutscene is basically have her join the party. I'm guessing a lot of her accents are, are like the little accent icons above a lot of her words are from some Nordic languages, I think. She's actually not terrible. She's not great, but she's not terrible. Yeah, she's basically... She's almost as good as Radius. That's the second character we've gotten that's kind of like that. Janice as well. Both decent characters. Snap I care less for, but both decent characters. I'm going to stick with Radius for now, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen for too long. The primary reason I'm going to stick with him for now is... Uh, is there anyone out there who can convince Fargo? Hmm. But yeah, I'm going to keep him more for plot reasons than anything else right now. Now, is... Okay, fine. Let me go in the door. Uh, I was wondering if Nikki popped in there. See if there was anything else I could do. Well, let's get back on this. And now that we've done pretty much all the stuff that we can do here... I think now it's time to get off the damn ship. Uh, this way. Alright, no more guard on the boat. Alright, so we got access to that. Now, when we uh, spoke with the sage and were able to battle him, speaking of which, I should be allocating something that I got. Where is that Thunderstorm Elm? Let's put that up top there. Yeah, this is a yellow innate only, level 6. Pretty powerful. Now, I said before that uh, there was a spot here, and I think the Sage said this as well, where the tides were different. You notice the uh, tides right around here where we get the icon uh, Dead Sea is a little bit different. Most of the other sea doesn't move too much, but this one, the... Uh, the water seems to almost be coming out from the Dead Sea area. So if we go here, pop open the menu, and play that Fiddler Crab. And in doing so, somehow that's revealed a new entrance. Death's Door. Now, I believe if you don't have Radius, he comes along for this section anyway. But let's just go straight forward. And what might this be? Evil Sword the Masamune. <laughs> Come again? Now, we have no choice but to withdraw for now. The path appears to be blocked off by that sword. He must have already been here. The negative sentiment associated with the sword has intensified, suggesting that there was already negative sentiment in the sword beforehand. Impossible to proceed without going mad. The so-called evil sword, the Masamune. Now, I played the previous game. That sword was nowhere near evil at any point. How is it evil now? Radius didn't answer that question. We cannot make our way into the Dead Sea without removing that sword. Only the Dragon Sword Iron Lancer can break the seal of the Masamune. Interesting. Now, I'm going to spoil the fact that they're not going to explain how the Masamune became evil in this game and offer up a theory. 
They never explain it, which is just stupid, in my opinion. It's a fa famous weapon from the previous game. Anyone who's played this game, who played the previous game, knows about this sword, knows it wasn't evil then, and they never explain how it happens to be evil. Based on the remake slash remaster slash bonus content of future Chrono Trigger versions after the PlayStation version, like the DS version, the Steam version, the mobile ports, there are some evidence in there that you can go out on a limb and work into a crafted theory that could explain it, but this game does nothing to explain it, and it's kind of frustrating. Basically, the idea that I come up with is in those uh, cinematic cutscenes from the PlayStation version of Chrono Trigger, where we saw that the Masamune was lost forever during the poor invasion of Guardia, it's assumed that the sword was corrupted by its wielder, whoever stole it. And considering our guess, based on a number of things, is that the thief was Dalton, we're assuming that he somehow had enough evil in him to corrupt the sword, and now, 20 years later, I think it was about 20 years later, it's here somehow, and evil. Not exactly sure how this works. The, uh, the timeline's a little skewed with aspects of how that's all working. Not sure. But uh, anyway, that's just my guess. The Einlancer, if you recall, was the sword that... Uh, Dario and Garai were buried under in Termina, uh, in the other world. I think, in fact, in this world as well. Swords forged by the ancient Dragonians. Legendary Holy Sword. Laid it to rest beside its rightful owner, Garai. Sleeps within the cavern. Didn't we see it in Termina? We have no choice. Yeah, what are you talking about? I'm, I thought it was in Termina. The Isle of the Damned was an ordinary cavern until it mutated into a nesting ground for demons. This may be the result of Garai's sentiments which have lingered. Negative sentiment which even the Holy Sword could not restrain. We need a certain item that Garai used while he was still alive. I have it stored away in a hut where Garai and I used to train. We must go there and get this item. Now, they don't tell you where this hut that he used to train at was, but considering what we know from the other world, that Radius was on Hermit's hideaway, we can assume that we can go there. First, I'm going to take a little pit stop at Termina. I didn't do this in my test run. But I'm going to pop in here and see what it says when we approach the sword that is uh, covering the grave of Garai and Dario. Which, if you remember, was over here. Garai and Dario. Well, they said it's a sacred sword. They didn't say it's the Iron Lancer, so I guess in this world it's not the Iron Lancer. It's just a sacred sword, whatever that means. Okay, fair enough. I know in the previous world it said it was the Iron Lancer. I just assumed that it was the same sword here. Alright. So let's go to Hermit's Hideaway. They used to train here, did they? That's one big dude. You lose again? Well, you're fighting one-handed with a one-handed sword against a dual wielder wearing massive armor who's double your size. 
Not really all that surprising, but uh, okay. Half a, tip, half a step too slow, huh? Interesting. Picking apart his fighting style. You're the only one who knows that about him, interestingly enough. And I thought I was a genius. Maybe he is. Who knows? They laugh the same way. Einlancer is a legendary holy sword, passed to the most skilled swordsmen of the Acacia Dragoons. Belonged to Grai before Dario took over the title. Hmm. Oh, they've... This is another flashback. They have found the Masamune. You, if you recall, this is the... Uh, uh, the Divine Dragon Falls. Interestingly enough, both uh, characters don't have portraits in the scene. Something wrong about this. See, that's the, you know, reaction I would expect to have to the Masamune. It's a legendary sword. We know it from the previous game. Hmm? Nothing if and he's doing a little dance. <laughs> huh. No use hanging around this place. Well, considering the walls look like they're alive. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Sword is cursed with hate and sorrow. Anyone who lays his hands on it will be overcome with negative sentiments and driven mad. And we saw you wielding it. There is more to this than we've seen. Now, there's nothing else to do here, so I'm going to turn on fast forward. We just have to wait for Radius to get back. And yeah, wander around and then talk to him. With this mirror, we should be able to make it to the inner parts of the Isle of the Damned. We get Garai's keep safe. Uh, by the way, one of the rewards for starting that side quest that we started on the Zelbus uh, that we'll have access to later is access to the ultimate set of equipment in the game. Just to pound it home even more, you really want to do this side quest. In order to get access to that, you need access to doing the side quest, which means agreeing to help Nikki on the ship. You need Zappa in the party. And one final piece that we can't get until later on. But in order to get that, we need to do the what's known as the Save Marble Quest. Anyway, now we were at Death's Door, we were almost in the Dead Sea, and then we decided we were going to go get the Einlander because there was an item in our way. And then we had to get another item before we could get that item. There's too many fetch quests in this game. Okay, we're back. Now, I've removed Radius temporarily from the party. Um, I don't think you have to have him in. I believe he'll show up anyway. In fact, I'll be testing that out this time uh, because, well, you'll see. Uh, there's some stuff. I've still got Radius still equipped with pretty much everything. The only thing I took off of him was his Holy Light element so that I could give it to Sprig. And the other thing I've given uh, Sprig is Meteor Shell. Sprig is basically set up uh, very similar to the way she was before with magic rings, mythical gear, whatever. Now, I haven't gone over some of the prizes we've got and some of the other items we've been getting recently. Um, I think I stole a rare one or I got a rare drop or something like that. Oh, uh, the antiviral cap. I think I said this was the only one you could get in the game from the giant blue. I was looking through, maybe it's a different one that I had in mind, because it's dropped by like three other enemies. So I'm not sure what I was thinking, or if I was confusing it with a different one, or... Maybe it's the antitoxinal cap is only from the gobbledygax, and that's what I was thinking. Either way, you can get more of them later if you want. Um, all of the charms here protect you against anti-whatever, I think I went over that. 
The Star Fragment from Starkey's Ship is actually an accessory. It protects you against the four most basic uh, status effects that you can get of, each, of all the different colors there, the four different colors. So that's an actually nice piece of, uh, you know, accessory to have access to. Um, the resistance ring that we got uh, during the Grand Slam, that decreases the time status effects last. And the stamina belt improves uh, stamina recovery rate by two instead of by one, which is what the stamina ring does. So that's even better. We'll be using that whenever we use a character that has crap stamina. Um, okay, so resistance ring, resistance belt, I think is the one we got. And the Dreamer's Bandana starts you off in battle with element power level increased by one automatically. Normally I would give this on someone who isn't uh, our main damage dealer, but I want to show off how powerful our new uh, addition is with the uh, Plasma Pistol, so I'm going to put it on to... Uh, links for the time being, and we're going to show off how that works and how useful that can be. Now, as you can remember from Another World, this place is kind of creepy. Now, over here, you'll, there was an item in here before, but uh, I think it was part of Skelly. It seems to be blocked off for the moment. There was another one down here. That's also blocked off. Hmm. Still love the sound effect of walking in here. It's so creepy. It's just, there's an element of creaking, like with bones. And there's also an element of squishing, which, yeah, it's just creepy. Anyway, this part also seems blocked off, but it's behind one of these wheel wisps. The will o wisps have an Inferno Rare Drop, if you care. The Deadbeats have a Holy Light Trap. Uh, I believe it's a Rare Drop. If you ran out of them, I would recommend fighting enough of these guys so that you can pick one up. Now, the real upside to having access to, as you can see with links there, Element Level 1 right off the bat without having to do any hits, is it guarantees that you can get off the Eagle Eye right away and get uh, everything up and ready so that you don't have to, you know, do a couple of attacks and then do one of these. And if I had done an attack and then was hit by this, and this inflicts confusion some of the time, I would never would have gotten my element off. And that is fortuitous timing that I could have never planned if I had tried. <laughs> But yeah, the idea is, is it prevents these specific situations from happening. So I now have Norris all primed up and ready to go. 200 damage. Well, there, he's free from that anyway. I'm going to take my other hit. I'm going to target the other Will of the Wisp here. That's a lot of damage. Uh, the Plasma Pistol, I think, also auto-crits on a number of enemies. I don't remember which one's off the top of my head. It looks like it's critting there. The other unique aspect is some of the enemies around here, including the Deadheads, will be annihilated because they are undead by Holy Light. So Holy Light, all you need to do is damage the other two, hit them with Holy Light, and the other two will be instantly killed. The damage alone should be enough to take out the Will of Wisps after some chip damage. As you saw, no damage uh, numbers on them, so they were killed instantly. And, yeah, you really want to use Holy Light in this area. It is the best element for this area. There's a Holy Light trap. Like I said, it's a rare drop, but chances are, as you go through here, you'll probably find one. Now, if you defeat one of those guys, uh, the Will of Wisps, and next to one of those broken uh, doorways, or one of those sealed up doorways guarding treasure, well, we can... Come back here. Come here. Come here. Get over here. Yeah, they will chase you. And what you do is you kite them along. Come on. You kite them along and you defeat them next to these spots. Come on. Come back here, you dork. 
and you fight them next to here, and if that little explosion that you saw last time happens around it, just like so, it will reveal the entrance to the doorway, you'll be able to get the item, and then it will respawn. So you can use these guys as much as you need to. We're just gonna go grab this guy over here again, kite him along down here, and then we'll be able to get the next item. Don't go too far, but don't hang back too far either. And there's an Inferno Rare Drop for my troubles. And it gives us access into here, which I'm stuck on something for some reason. And the lowly carapace, which we don't need, but I'm getting all the treasure. So that's kind of one of the mechanics of this area and how it functions. So let's take that knowledge and move on to the next section of the area. This one contains some other new enemies, the airframes. Let's fight one. The airframes, as I talked about earlier, are pretty powerful, but they are also undead. Not only are we a lot more powerful this time, but, well, we can also just annihilate them with uh, being undead. So we do a few hits, and hit them with Holy Light, doesn't matter who's using it. It automatically kills these guys, and we can move on. Now, I think they have some interesting drops, but not anymore. Ooh, strength and magic. Strength, strength and agility. Cool. That was not particularly an interesting uh, drop, but okay. Now, there's a few areas over here I'm trying to remember. As you can see, the area is kind of looping in on itself. No matter where you go, you end up uh, coming from an, a location where you've already been before. And then we hit a mirror. Now, we got a mirror called the Garai Keepsake, which if you use it next to one of these, allows you to walk right through. As you can see, this entire area loops in on itself. There's nothing special about any of those paths I just showed. I'm just showing you all the other locations. The important one is up here. This is the only one that leads to anything. So we use the Garai Keepsake, and we're able to walk right through here. And here's one of these guys. So we're going to kite him along a little bit here, because there's something we need to do with Now, I highly recommend you save before doing this. Because this is, well, kind of unique. We're just going to finish these guys off real quick. Unless they magma burst me first. Well, it's only Sprig. Sprig doesn't matter particularly for this fight. I'm not even going to bother setting up buffs. We're just going to annihilate things real fast and move on. Wow. Now, as you can see, we now have something else. Before fighting this, this is a once in an entire playthrough battle. This enemy can be doppelganged. If that's a word, I, I, I don't know the past tense of doppelgang. Anyway, I highly recommend that you have Sprig Kit. Highly recommend it. It is one of, if not the best doppelgang in the entire game, and I will be demonstrating its prowess. This is White Knight, who is, of course, Dark Elemental, to, uh, to make sense of everything. We're going to Eagle Eye on uh, Norse here, get a few hits in to weaken it down. It's pretty powerful. If I remember correctly, it has somewhere in and around 
600-ish HP, I think. He's decreased my attack and increased his defense. So what we want to do is we want to start uh, getting the field effect in our favor. I don't think this will kill it. I hope it doesn't. I don't think it's technically undead. So there's a little more damage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little chip shot here. And... Oh, you don't... I already did that. Um, we'll throw Genius on Sprig there. Because we want Sprig to finish off the fight. I was going to throw Eagle Eye on him, but, or on her, but then I forgot that I already used that. So we're not worried about our physical damage in this case. So we're going to do that, and we're going to do Meteor Shower first, and I'll go Holy Light next time. Because I don't think Holy Light would have done enough damage to finish off White Knight. But it might have. Alright, so we're going to defend, defend... Defend again. One more there. And Sprig use Holy Lights. Now, there's a number of other interesting aspects to the White Knight. Uh, it has a rare drop that if you're really interested, you should go for. It's unnecessary, and I don't factor it into any of my plans, but if you get extremely lucky, you can win a Rainbow Shell, or is it win? Uh, yeah, it's a rare drop. The common drop is iron. I thought it was something else. But... Oh well, that's fine. More importantly, we get the Golden Tierra, which is completely useless and does nothing but sell for money. It sells for a lot of money. It sells for more money than I have. Put it that way. But more important than any of that, that is the one and only time you can fight that in the entire game. And if you don't get it for Sprig, you will be disappointed later on. Ah, uh, he's too far away. Now, the next one we want to get to is down there. You see me? Do you see me? Do you see me? He doesn't see me. Okay. So we're going to have to go and grab the uh, other guy for this last treasure chest. There's only four items in here. But let's get you following me here first. Hey, come back here. Follow me. Follow me. Sadly, this takes forever, but... Uh, Actually, I'm trying to remember if this other item is worth it. I don't think it is. I think it's an, an Inferno element, if I am reading this treasure list correctly. But we have to get all the treasure, because that's how the game is played. Come back here. Follow me. Stop getting stuck. Uh, that door, I'm going to run out and save before going there. All right, now run down the ladder real quick. Run over here. Make sure you encounter it right next to the door. There we go. Bringing protection from confusion might be worthwhile doing in here because a lot of the time those will o wisps will inflict it on you because uh, they love to open with Magma first. So anyway, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Next time, I'm going to come in here and we're going to show off the, uh, the upcoming sequence here. And, well, I'm going to have a slightly different party for it, and I'll, I'll show you kind of different ways of dealing with what's upcoming. But anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.